Hi, I'm Jenny Shampoo. I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with um, Dr. Jana Lee Emmer. Dr. Emmer is the director of the Museum of Art at Brigham Young University. She has many years of experience teaching art history at several uh, universities and working in various museums. Her area of study is modern and contemporary art. And today we're talking about uh, the scriptures and, and Enos through the Words of Mormon. And the artwork that we have is by Minerva Teichert. It's called Mosiah Interprets the Jaredite Stone um, from 1949 to 1951. And we're so lucky um, that Dr. Emmer was able to pull out the original painting for us today. We're in the print study room at the Museum of Art at BYU. Um, Dr. Emmer, can you tell us a little bit about how this artwork interprets the scripture? Sure. Well, mm -hmm. it's an honor to have you here. We're delighted to talk about this work. Um, this particular painting is a part of our larger collection. Uh, we have the complete series um, of 42 paintings by Minerva Teichert of the Book of Mormon. So this is one of them. And uh, Minerva, of course, has become a really beloved LDS artist that many know and appreciate her work. Um, and I think this is probably one that the, maybe people aren't as familiar with. So it's right. lovely to, to mm -hmm. take a second and talk about um, this work and what she's, what she's focused on in this particular painting. Um, I will say that Teichert was a, she grew up in the West. She's kind of Utah and Wyoming and Idaho, was mm -hmm. trained in New York and that highly influenced her style. She has a very kind of, um, mural style that is a really thin application of paint, mm -hmm. um, kind of flatter approach. Um, and uh, I think you see that in this work. This is an oil um, on masonite, and she often will fl flip the, that board over and paint kind of on the rougher side. So you see it almost looks a little bit like canvas when you look up close, but that's part of that masonite board that okay. she loved the texture of, and you see that a little bit in this work. So yeah. it's a, a little bit of background on her. And then I also will say that this was a labor of love for her. Mm -hmm. So she was not commissioned by anyone to do this. She wanted to do it and felt like it was part of her mission mm -hmm. to document part of the church and the Book of Mormon, yeah. part of what her teacher, Robert Penry, commissioned her to do was to paint that mm -hmm. Mormon story. Right. And, um, and so that's what she did. So she was painting these, this whole series from 1949 to 1951. And that's um, when she did this particular work of mm -hmm. the Book of Omni. So we can, we can yeah. dive in now <laughs> to, the, to the work yeah. itself. So we're in the Book of Omni, and, yeah. and what's happening here? Who are the figures? What are they doing? Well, uh, I, you know, <laughs> the Book of Omni, it's one of those short books yeah. that often I think we fly through. Mm -hmm. And fascinatingly, um, Minerva painted two works from the Book of Omni. So okay. I think it's one of those works that, despite its brevity, there's just a lot of important information that comes out of this. And it's giving us a little bit of background to the people of Zarahemla and what is happening. So right, uh, it's describing here that Mosiah and the people of Nephi have left uh, their lands and have come up and found the land of Zarahemla. And in the land of Zarahemla are the Mulekites. And so they're introduced to this whole different people and um, they become part of those people and Mosiah becomes their king. So they are an integrated Nephite and Mulekite people okay. and Mosiah teaches them their language. And in, the, in that process, they discover this uh, stella or this, this stone pediment yes. that is a record of ancient peoples and they ask Mosiah if he can translate this. And that's this moment mm -hmm. that Teichert has chosen to depict. So this is verse 20 of Omni 1, when it says that Mosiah interpreted it mm -hmm. through the gift of power of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So we get that little phrase, the gift of power of God. Um, and really fascinatingly, she has kind of used her imagination a little bit, I think her own studies, and put together the scene of what that might have looked like. So we see King Mosiah here, he's seated, he's in this moment, you can see his finger touching this 
this record, this ancient stone record, and then you have a scribe over here that's recording the mm -hmm. translation. There are three other figures present. Two of them are Mulekite people who are holding up the stone. So they have slightly different clothing than the two Nephites that are Mosiah and the scribe. Mm -hmm. They have the pop of kind of red headdress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Minerva loved a pop of red. So she <laughs> loved to include that. So you see that there, they're holding up the stone. And then you have over here, another Mulekite, probably leader by his headdress. And um, Minerva was very inspired by ancient civilizations. Um, so again, mm -hmm. even that Stella that she was mm -hmm. probably looking at ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. And clearly Egyptian influence in the clothing and in the headdress sure. that she puts here. So she's kind of trying to imagine what an ancient people, mm -hmm. and the Mulekites we know are people who left at the time of the Tower of Babel, and they also came to the Americas. So okay. it's a, a counter story, another story of peoples. And really what I love about this painting is that it's one of few that we see three peoples represented really well. So mm. the Nephites in King Mosiah and his scribe, the Mulekites in these three other figures and who have asked him if he can interpret this record, and this record that represents um, the Jaredite people. Right. And the Jaredites are um, from, this is Coriantumr, and they're, mm -hmm. he's you know reading this story. They're trying to understand another people and what, mm -hmm. their, what their story was. So uh, yeah. that's this, this moment that we see right here. That's so fascinating. And I think in the scriptures too, the, the Mulekites were so excited to find someone who could, they had found this stone, they, they couldn't figure out what it said, and they were so excited to know that Mosiah could translate it, as you said, by the gift and power of God. Um, now, this is Mosiah, the father of Benjamin. And then Benjamin also has a son named Mosiah, who also um, translates Jaredite, 24 Jaredite gold plates. Um, so both Mosiahs are translating some of this Jaredite history, um, and that's recorded in Mosiah 8. <laughs> and, and it's there in Mosiah, actually Mosiah 28, where it talks about the, um, the two stones which were fastened in the rims of a bow. And, and I just, like you were saying, Minerva is, is thinking about these scriptures and, and thinking, you know, this has never been visualized before. What does the Urim and Thummim look like? What does it look like to translate? Can, can you talk any more about the choices she's making as an artist or? Yeah, I mean, I think I just love the imagination. She's really obviously thinking and reading and then mm -hmm. coming up with, well, this is what I imagine. So you see he's wearing a kind of a breastplate that goes over his shoulder and then ties around. And then you see part of that armature goes up and holds this glowing stone up to his eyes. Um, and that is assisting in this, right. this, in this process. So uh, again, I think a, a lovely um, imagining on her part of, of what mm -hmm. this contraption might have looked like. Right, I mean, obviously we don't know exactly how it looked, but I love that she's really thinking about it and, um, and trying to, to think about how she can make the story accessible to other people. And I, yeah, I really, mm -hmm. I really think that that's part of the beauty of what artists can do is mm -hmm. imagine it in one way and inspire us to think about it right. in new ways, whether it's this or something similar, yeah. um, that you know, she's kind of wanting to think through, what, what did that mean that he translated it by the gift and power of God? And, was he using the Yerom Thummim in this way to do it? Is this similar to her other works in the series? Yeah, I mean, a lot of her works, um, I, I think it's really fascinating to see which stories of the Book of Mormon she, she mm -hmm. chooses. Some stories I think, oh, I would sure she would choose that, and she doesn't. And other <laughs> stories she gives a lot of attention to that we might have, you know, kind of slid by really quickly. So okay. I find that, you know, really fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, but often she is doing these scenes that, again, one of her mantras was um, that he who runs might read. Okay. So she really wants you to be able to quickly assess what's happening in the painting. And I think she's quite successful in these works to bring the action to the foreground, choose this moment of translation. And that way, I think it's similar to some of the other scenes that mm -hmm. she chooses to do in the Book of Mormon. Do you have um, a personal reaction to this, to this piece or to the scriptures or just or Minerva's whole series on the Book of Mormon? You know, I love, um, 
that it was a work that she felt personally compelled to do. Mm -hmm. She wrote her daughter a letter once and said, um, I'll, I'm just paraphrasing, but sort of this is the greatest job mm -hmm. and the toughest one I've mm -hmm. ever done. And so I think, you know, she was very, it was close to her heart, this topic, and she yeah. wanted to introduce people to the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. um, through these um, these images and these paintings. And I, I think they're still doing what she wanted them to do right. clear back when she painted them in, in 1950. And I think that legacy will, will continue to give, and I, I really love that about about yeah. this whole series. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, we appreciate you and, and the work you're doing to to preserve and um, contextualize Minerva Teichert's um, work and, and her legacy. I'm just so happy to get to see it in person. I am a big proponent of seeing art in person when you can. It's just a very different experience, no matter how familiar you, familiar you are with a, a digital image, seeing it in person just it's always gonna- it Brings it to life. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. I was just noticing, we were talking before, it, this purple on mosaic is Oh yeah, I'm so, glad you mentioned that. So beautiful. So much more vibrant than I realized. Um, and I feel like even just the way he's touching the stone and along with the sort of the way she calls attention to her painting just creates a real materiality here mm. like a focus on the materiality of this and it, it existing in the real world um that i think it is a really really beautiful yeah no i agree yeah. I mean, she's a very modern painter so mm -hmm. i feel like it's really fresh even today it's almost as if you can feel her painting it quickly yeah the brush strokes of the purple for mm -hmm. his royal kingly status or that pop of red or yeah. the blue, um, you know, the pointing of the st onto the stone. I mean, just mm -hmm. to kind of say, this is a real stone. This yeah. is what this was. And, and I think she, she does it so well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for inviting us in today. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm thrilled. Thank you.